everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Welcome back to Build. This year marks the 30th anniversary of New Fest, New York's premier LGBT film festival. The event brings together filmmakers and audiences to give voice and visibility to all faces of the LGBTQ experience. Today, I'll be chatting with New Fest staff Robert Kushner, Nick McCarthy, Radhika Rajkumar, and filmmaker Caroline Burler. But first, let's check out a clip of what we can expect. Everyone, put your hands together for Nick, Rabba, Radhika, and Caroline. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you. Thank you for Good. coming. We're getting Thanks so for close us. to the event. How does it feel that it's... I know you guys probably plan all year for it. Yes, it's a long process getting ready to have the whole festival. We have 144 films from 32 countries, wow. so it's a lot planning for that over seven days. So we're very excited and almost there. And Radhika, tell me about this, the theme of lose yourself, find yourself. Right, so it is our 30th anniversary, so we decided to look back into the New Fest archives at all of the films we've shown over the past 30 years because we've always been really good at championing every single story in the LGBTQ community. So all of these constructs that you see here are actually based on and inspired by films that we've already shown. Oh, I love that. Even vampires. Yes, and we actually have a lesbian vampire drama this year as well. Um, we've had the le uh, vampire lovers in the past, but this year we have the Carmilla movie. So that's another lesbian vampire film for the ages. The festival does back up to Halloween. We end on the 30th, so in honor of that, we have a whole sidebar of Halloween-based Movies that work. Yeah, it's called Halloween. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really great actually. We're featuring um, three features and a whole shorts program called Halloween Shorts as well. Um, we're really excited. One of them is called Killer Unicorn and uh, it takes place in Bushwick in Brooklyn. And it's from the people who do Bushwick. So it's going to be a really great big like drag slasher spectacular. Um, we're also showing a film called Knife and Heart that was a can official selection as well. Um, so we're really excited about the Halloween side. Yeah, I love bar. the spooky theme. Yeah, right? You got to get the costumes out. Like, that's more <laughs> we camp like that. <laughs> and let's just talk logistics for a second. If people do want to check out some of these films, where do they go to find out more information? How does admission work? Oh, yeah. You can go to newfest.org um, and see our trailer. We have the full trailer there, too, which will show you all of our centerpiece and opening and closing night selections. You get a little bit more of a taste of it there. Um, but, yeah, if you go to newfest.org, you can see the full lineup of 144 films. Um, and then tickets are right there. Um, we also have festival passes. So you can buy ticket packages and get even more discounts. Um, what I love about festival passes and annual membership to Newfest, though, is you get access to the VIP Filmmaker Lounge. And there we have, you know, Stoli and we have Lagunitas. And you get to, like, sit <laughs> there and chat with all the filmmakers mm -hmm. and it sort of brings the community together um, I love you know all the films that we're sharing and those stories being told but I think standing online or being in the festival lounge you can communicate with other people who experience these stories and then get their own stories too it sort of transcends film to become part of a community I think it's why like LGBT film festivals you know have that extra importance to them too and a lot of the films have like a talk back afterwards, right, with some of the directors and producers. So you're also getting that insight. And I'm sure that brings up even more things for conversations. Absolutely, afterwards. yeah. Um, I'd say about 80% of our films this year will have talk backs, um, whether we have the directors coming in or they're local. Um, so definitely the conversation begins after the film and then begins after the theater as well. So you guys mentioned it's been 30 years. Um, how do you think the festival has evolved or changed in, the, in that time span? Because that's quite a bit of time and a lot a bit has happened. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we started in 1988. It was kind of like the height of the AIDS crisis. And it was really important for the LGBT community to get together, to create community among themselves, and to see themselves reflected on screen in, with positive images and positive stories that really um, were able to empower people. Uh, and so that's been something that's been a consistent throughout the years, is to really find a place to gather, see yourselves on screen, see other people within the community on screen. And over the years, like, I think, I think the the first year there were maybe about 50 films, which is pretty huge. A lot of those were from previous years, maybe even the 70s or even earlier. Uh, the Children's Hour, I think, played, and Caravaggio <laughs> and other things like that. Now we try to have as many contemporary films. Almost everything is a current film. A lot of them are New York premieres. Um, and we are showing, in honor of our anniversary, we have three um, uh, anniversary screenings, uh, one from 
10 years ago? 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and 30 years, or no, no, two from 20 years ago, <laughs> yeah, adding it all up. Um, the legacy centerpiece, actually, um, we're showing in 35 millimeter, um, which is a really great throwback to sort of classic film texture. Um, and it's a film called High Art uh, from 1998. It was actually um, our 1998 opening night film uh, at New Fest. So it's sort of hearkening back to that. Um, it features Ali Sheedy, um, Arata Mitchell, and Patricia Clarkson, mm -hmm. um, and it's directed by uh, Lisa Cholodenko, um, who is an Oscar nominee for Kids Are All Right. Right? Um, and we're really excited to have Patricia Clarkson and Lisa Cholodenko for the Q&A afterwards. Um, and I even remember seeing that film on like IFC Midnight in my parents' basement. And I think that's where like <laughs> a lot of youth too, like uh, and you know adults too, sort of see themselves on screen for the first time and identify with the LGBT community being there. Um, and I think that reflection ends up inspiring you to like seek out more and more of that and feel more understanding of yourself and the community around you. So we're excited to sort of call back to that, but then feature, what, 141 other new projects um, because I think queer filmmaking is going in a really positive and productive direction. Yeah. So we're really excited to be able to provide that platform and for a, a lot of emerging voices too. And our opening night film is also in a way harkening back or reflecting our history. So we started in 1988, but our opening night film is called 1985. <laughs> but the, uh, it is, it's, it's based kind of like a new AIDS narrative. It's a beautiful film. Nick, can you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it stars Corey Michael Smith, uh, Virginia Madsen, and Michael Chiklis. Um, Corey Michael Smith uh, stars as a 20 something advertising executive in New York City, um, returning home to Texas in 1985 around Christmas time um, to sort of say goodbye to his family. Um, it is an AIDS narrative, um, but the way that it's textured in this really super crisp, super 16 millimeter um, is that it's sort of more of a subtext. Uh, it's an informed understanding that, you know, he has AIDS, but it's really about the dynamics within the family um, and sort of exploring how they interact with each other, you know, based it's on previous It's never really things. mentioned, is it really? Mm -hmm. It's not explicitly mentioned. I mean, I think that's what's so gorgeous and modern about and it. unique about it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a modern queer classic in that way that it has that new kind of take on an AIDS narrative, which is sort of perfect for opening night, and it's gorgeous and, and we will moving. be having all of the stars of the film there that night. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and a party afterwards, night. too. <laughs> you sort of speak about the evolution of film. How do you think films covering the LGBT community have evolved in these 30 years? How, what has it been maybe the biggest change or difference you've seen in how these stories are told? You know, it's really more diverse stories and more intersections of stories. Again, earlier on, well, when, from when we started, there were a lot of AIDS-focused stories. Um, and that has evolved now into, I mean, all the LGBTQ in total, all the letters covered, but then intersections with that. New Fest is a year-round organization. We, the festival is our um, main uh, event throughout the year. Um, but we show films all other times of the year. And like we've had films about, you know, handicapped gay people or about trans people, uh, trans families, um, or, you know, struggles with getting um, gay marriage passed uh, and other political issues. So it's really just grown so much and expanded that way. Uh, what would you I say? think it's on a global scale as well. We sort of mm -hmm. consider um, our international centerpiece this year is a film called Rafiki. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's from Kenya. Totally, yeah. Yeah, um, it world premiered at Cannes. It was actually the first film to ever world premiere at Cannes from Kenya. Um, and it was immediately banned um, because it portrayed a positive representation of two young women in love. And it's very innocent love. It's not an explicit film. It's a gorgeously tenderly rendered film. Um, and it shows that, you know, something that just implies this and has like a non-explicit take on it could be considered, you know, so terrible at other parts of the world. Um, I think that kind of global perspective really informs the festival itself. Um, and then you also even look at, you know, problems at home. Um, we have Boy Erased uh, with Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe and Lucas Hedges, you may have heard of them, yeah. Uh, and we're really excited for that to be our US centerpiece. Um, and that's really, you know, challenging the idea of conversion therapy, which, you know, Right now, it's still, I think it was over 700,000 kids have gone through conversion therapy um, throughout the United States. And I, I think it's like, uh, the number is alarming, which is why I try to forget it almost. Um, but I think it's over 30 states do not have laws outlawing conversion therapy mm -hmm. right now. Um, so it's a very vital narrative. Um, and it's a gorgeous film too. So we're really excited to be able to shed light on an issue while we're presenting some really, really solid entertainment that depicts LGBTQ characters. And Boy Erase is a really big film. You mentioned all of these stars whose names are really familiar. Um, and then that might make, 
some people think, well, if we already are having this representation in these big blockbuster films, is a film festival like this still needed? And what would your answer to that be? Well, really, Boy Erased is a big, you know, um, uh, uh, let's see, it's a mass, mass film. Like, it can be pleasing for everyone, which is good. It's handled in proper ways. Um, but there's so many other stories that we have at the festival that are smaller. There's so many stories that one may never see beyond the screen if it's not shown at a festival like ours. What we do is we lift up these stories, whether they're documentaries that we're showing or whether they're... Um, uh, features by first-time filmmakers that may not get into theaters otherwise, uh, we're able to help promote those and show those. And we have so many of those, those films um, that it's really just important to get the word out and support the whole community of filmmakers, like Caroline, who's a first-time yeah. filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah, 80% of our um, features are actually from first-time filmmakers this year. So despite having, you know, like uh, Boy Erased and um, having Rafiki and also having Maplethorpe, um, all these are really large films, um, there's a lot to find in submissions um, and in knowing other festivals too and being able to, you know, provide that platform for a lot of emerging LGBT voices. Mm -hmm. um, it's that balance, I think, that's so important in a festival like this. I want to note really quick on Rafiki, I was reading up on it um, just because I thought the story was so frustrating. Um, but then a judge actually right put uh, we lifted the ban for a yep. week so that it could go into Oscar contention. Mm -hmm. And I love that you guys are premiering it here. And I almost think that getting that negative press will even help it get even more positive press and more people will want to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the, the silver lining to some of that right. nonsense yeah. that's still happening is that I think it will attract more people to want to come to the festival and see the film. Yeah, it's really bold that a filmmaker would make a film like this in Kenya yeah. where mm -hmm. it's banned. You're not allowed to show images like this and to um, just lead the charge in, in getting a film out there. And because there were so much press about Rafiki, about the ban, um, it, will get, it will get seen more. And also the government was forced to lift the ban on that so that it can get it so it can uh, be in the Oscar contention because mm -hmm. yeah. it has to I think run for seven days in your home country to yes. be considered so I was and those were all sold out in Nairobi I heard of course. So, yeah. yeah of course they were um, you mentioned some of the other filmmakers you have Caroline you have a film that we're going to see in the festival and I think we have a trailer so let's check that up, out really quick and then we'll chat with you about it I fell in love I started watching these films and suddenly I was like, oh my God, this is the language I should be speaking. When I was very young, I don't think I ever saw any lesbians in film or popular culture, only in books. When I started 16 millimeter film, I was coming out. And it seemed like if we're experimenting with our lives and the way we're gonna live, that our film or our art form should also be experimental. I always felt like, I need to talk about the things that I know about that I haven't quite heard being spoken about. For me, a lot of them were things that were scary. It was around the same time that I wanted to become a filmmaker that I was discovering this alternate sexuality, which brings me to this documentary and being an old gay. So Caroline, just take me a little bit through why you thought this was the right time to tell this story. Well, it was a really amazing coincidence that I met Rose Trochet in my first year at film school and I was so inspired by her and I asked her if I could do this interview with her because I've the films have always been important to me. I grew up in Texas. I didn't have a lot of adult gay role models, so the movies were super important to me, and I've always been curious about the women behind the camera, and I wanted to know more about how this all got started. So I, I did the interview with Rose, and it just grew from there very organically. I reached out to lots of filmmakers, and everyone was really enthusiastic about it. What kind of pressures do you think there are still for female directors to stay quiet about their sexuality? Hmm. I think we're actually in a really amazing time where we're seeing so many queer stories being told by women, women of color, women from you know all parts of the world. Um, so I hope that this is just you know the beginning of a great turning point. So I think it's a, actually a really great time for women in film. What first um, attracted me to that trailer was there's just so many kind of just like silent heroes in every category, whether it's film or media in general or politics. And the older you get, the more you learn stories and LGBTQ people have been there throughout history. Mm -hmm. So I loved seeing the trailer for this film because I think it's just shedding a light on something that we continue to see 
over and over again. Is that kind of the overall beauty of this festival is that it's just, again, sharing these stories that have always been there, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's really getting the words out on people who've been part of everybody's lives. They may not have been as visible as they were 30 years ago and certainly before that, but now we are out there more in the public eye uh, and now we can get to more granular aspects, whether it's reflecting on history of, of women filmmakers, uh, which is so appropriate for our 30th anniversary to look back on um, the history of uh, lesbian filmmakers. Um, yeah, it's a really, it's a wonderful opportunity and time that we're in, as Caroline said. Mm -hmm. Even I saw one documentary on Cherry Grove, and I love that people think Fire Island is something new, and it, <laughs> then the people in the film are like, no, like, this has been happening, you know what I mean? Cherry Grove was a creative center going back to the, I think the 20s even, and it was a place that, um, you know, LGBT people found uh, respite and could get away and could dance with each other when that was illegal. Mm. Uh, and there were still problems. People from the mainland would come and arrest people in Cherry Grove on Fire Island. Uh, and so this uh, film, Cherry Grove Stories, uh, looks back at that and the history and where we are now with the people who are living there now and mm -hmm. how, how times have changed. Yeah, and that feature is even preceded by a short um, that's called Marie's Crisis. That's all about uh, Marie's Crisis, the uh, piano bar that's down in the Greenwich Village. So we want to bring everything back to New York as well. Um, but yeah, it's why, you know, Caroline's film was such a perfect documentary centerpiece selection. Um, and it's great because, as you mentioned, high art is even like featured in it. And everyone's like, I love high art. Um, so everything sort of communicates along the lines, I think. And that's what's so great about programming a festival is that you can sort of balance like how each part of it talks to each other um, and inspires another one and gets you excited to see the next film and you get out of film and go into the next one. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited to share uh, Dyke's Camera Action with the audiences in New York for its New York premiere. Mm -hmm. Homecoming so screening. Exciting. Congratulations yeah. again. So excited to have a hometown screening finally. We've played all over the world and it's good to be home. And didn't you just won an award a few minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. While yeah. We were, yeah. While we were she won an award. award. Yeah, we just heard from the Queer Lisboa Festival. We got an audience award. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They love Liz you in Brazil. Lisbon, Lisbon is a hot city right now, so that's really it. wonderful. Yeah. Let's go to the audience really quick for some questions. To be a first. Hi. I just want to say, first of all, my mind is blown because this is like the very first time I'm hearing of the film festival. So I wanted to know, um, and forgive me for being naive. I wanted to know, um, is it in one location or is it in various locations throughout New York City? That's a good question. Yeah, so the festival actually takes place in Chelsea. It's not a bad question at all. Um, but we have the SVA Theater in Chelsea and right across the street, the Sinopolis Chelsea Theater. Um, both on West 23rd Street. Yes, both on West 23rd Street. They Most of the screenings happen there. And we also have some satellite screenings that happen at the LGBT Center on West 13th Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been to the LGBT Community Center, it's a wonderful place, Great place. to go on 13th Street, just uh, west of 7th Avenue. Thank you. Will there be clips of any of the talks or anything available for people to see? I was, I'm always curious about that. If people are watching around the U.S. and maybe can't come to the festival, is there any kind of interactive online thing that they can be a part of? What is our live streaming that we may have this year? We're, yeah. We're exploring some Facebook <laughs> live events um, mm -hmm. right now. Our social media manager should have been here too. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, um, there could be a lot of engagement that we have, like, you know, especially, I think even on, like, Instagram platforms too. Um, we've been doing a bit of campaign, especially even through this, where it's like, when did you first see yourself on screen as, you know, a queer audience member? Um, and, you know, it's so great hearing the answers, too, because you hear this, like, wide breadth of stories that are being reshared again and again. Um, That's the wonderful but, thing about coming to a yeah. film festival as opposed to just going to a movie you're watching mm -hmm. at home is you can engage with the filmmakers and even engage with other members of the audience through the Q&A. And just, it's, it's a really incredible experience. Last question. Hi. Um, I was wondering, um, since there are 144 films, how, how do you guys go about acquiring um, movies that you want uh, to be seen at the festival? Do you go um, look at some of the trailers and ask uh, the different studios if they could play the, your, their movies or studios come to you? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it can come through a few different ways. Um, sometimes uh, there's a lot of traveling to other festivals as well. Um, and when you hear about films from other festivals, you can sort of contact them and be like, I heard this is really great, um, especially if it's a kind of story that you never heard of before. And you're like, I really want to see this. I want to experience like what people were telling with this. So I'd say other festivals, um, as well as submissions. Um, we have submissions that should be opening up again in um, early April this year. Um, and any filmmaker can submit to it too. Um, so you can put your film in there 
and then we have a bunch of hardworking volunteer screening committee members um, who go through all of them, every short, every feature that's put in there, and then we have conversations about, you know, what works best um, in this environment too, and and what film inspired you more? Um, and it's it's really great having those conversations with other volunteer screening committee members because you sort of get the full perspective too of what one person thinks of a film. Um, so it really rounds it out. So you know you know what will engage with an audience too, and, and what's most deserving. But I mean, it's there are so many films that we wish we could show. <laughs> we just have the capacity. Um, but uh, but we're really excited with all 144 this year. So. Did you just keep growing and getting bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, we right. added a day this year. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we added a whole day this year. Last year it was only six days, and now it's seven. And what's wonderful for um, emerging filmmakers is we at the festival have 11 shorts programs this year. Mm -hmm. Boys shorts, girls shorts, trans and binary shorts. What other? And then um, there's a animated queer Jewish shorts. shorts. Yeah, there's an animated uh, queer animation called Feminist Drawn Shorts. This Way. Yeah. F word, feminist, yeah. F -word, feminist F -word, shorts. Feminist shorts. Yeah. Um, so often when people are drag submitting shorts. online. Drag, <laughs> drag shorts. Yeah. Drag yeah. Drag wigged, wigged out. Drag wigged shorts. out. Drag <laughs> shorts. Which is great, actually. It features like shorts with like Bob the Drag Queen and Ginger Minge. And mm -hmm. Latrice Royale gives the best performance, I think, of one any of the films <laughs> in a short film called Marabo that's part of the Drag Shorts program. So. Well, I'm excited. I've been looking at the schedule, trying to figure out which ones I can come to. Like you said, seven days, so we all have an opportunity to get out and check out a film. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to attend New Fest, you can go to newfest.org slash festival. It's from October 24th through the 30th. Please give it up for Nick, Robert, Radika, and Caroline. <laughs> <laughs>